In this video, we're going to build an e-commerce site using Next.js and Swell. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamed. I'm a full stack JavaScript developer. And here on this channel, we talk all about modern web development topics, including React and Next.js. Let's get into this. So Swell is a headless API first e-commerce platform with built-in support for native subscriptions and marketplace. What does that mean? Well, headless means that the front end is decoupled from the back end. Again, it means that you are free to choose any front end technology that you want to use with this back end. So basically, Swell is going to be your back end, your content management system that's geared toward e commerce. So the models and the data types are suitable for e commerce. But really, you can use Swell for any content models. Uh, as a CMS or as a backend service. And then it exposes your content via an API, which you can then hook up to any front-end technologies that you like. In this case, if you're using Next.js, but you can build it with Swelt, Vue, or any other thing that you would like. Now, the native subscription part is uh, oftentimes when you are using an e-commerce solution like Shopify, if you want to sell products on subscription, for example, digital products or even physical products, but on subscription, you need to use third party plugins uh, because it's not natively supported in Shopify. But Swell natively supports um, subscription and we're going to see that together. And then I mentioned also marketplace. And that means that you can turn a store, you can create a site, which is a marketplace, meaning it's something like Amazon. Sellers can come in, bring in their products, and then buyers can come and shop. So you basically are the marketplace where you connect the vendors and buyers together. It has the extensibility for you to turn your e-commerce site to a marketplace. And hopefully we will touch on that in a later video because it's pretty extensive what you can do with Sewell. So I will cover um, in different uh, videos, different things that you can do. But for this part, what we're looking at is to build an e-commerce site, something like this that you can see. We have products, uh, sample products that come in when you go through the onboarding of Swell. You can just create this um, sample store with some products here. Um, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically render these uh, categories from the product. So these are not hard coded. These come from my um, products and then uh, you can filter through these um, different products again these filters are dynamically changing based on the products that you can see here um, and then eventually when you select a product uh, you'd be able to see different images if it has if this one doesn't or different purchase options let me show you something that has maybe different purchase options um, over here, you can see we have different images, and this is using Tailwind CSS, uh, which is amazing. Uh, so this is specific product comes in two different sizes, so you can define different attributes for your products, different sizes, different colors, um, different origins, different brands, as you saw in the previous kind of page. And here we have different purchase options, so you can have a one-time purchase or you can buy a subscription. Uh, to receive this product every week or two weeks so you can have different define different plans in the swell dashboard we're going to see that in a second together and then finally when you add to cart um, you'd be able to see this in the cart and then go through a checkout which redirects you to a hosted checkout page uh, from swell and then the customer would be able to fill out their information and pay for what they have uh, selected and you would be able to see this in your dashboard so going back to the Swell dashboard, if, if I just log into my account over here, let me just make this a bit smaller. Hopefully you can still see. Uh, okay, beautiful. So once you go um, and create an account on Swell, it uh, kind of walks you through an onboarding um, kind of um, flow where you can define uh, your store name. Mine's called Next Commerce. You could select your country. Uh, you can select your storefront. It comes in with a storefront that's built with Noxt uh, from Vue. Um, 
but we're going to have our own custom storefront um, built that is just connected to the API exposed by the commerce. And you would have the option to also import some sample products and that's all I have done here. So products you could see, these are the same products that we were seeing. Let me just make this a bit bigger because it's small. So these are all the products that we were seeing on the site. Uh, and you can you can define new products. Um, and, and the good thing about uh, products here or Swell is that you can create different type of products, uh, a physical product, a digital product, which is probably more suitable for a subscription, or it can be even one time. You can create uh, product bundles uh, where you would bundle up a couple of products together to sell for at a cheaper price, maybe. You could create gift cards that you could share with your customers and that would be applied to to their balance uh, when they're purchasing from your site uh, and, and when you're adding a product let me just bring a bring in a product that already exists let's say this coffee over here as you can see you can define different attributes for your products and then specify the attributes that's relevant to this specific product for this product um, you'd be able to post in different images, and this is what we're pulling in from our Next.js site to show. Uh, you can define different categories or the categories that this product belongs to, and those would correlate with the categories that we have seen over here. So these categories are coming from um, our categories here. So if I jump to categories, you can see I can define different categories. The top level are equipment, coffee, subscriptions, so after categories, you can also see that you can define different pricings for your product, a list price, and if it is on sale or not, and a sale price. Let me just remove myself here so you can see um, this part a bit better. And let me just make this a little smaller, maybe um, not as visible, but if you could see here, there's subscription pricing right here on the product page. You could turn this on by just flipping this switch on this turns subscription plans on for that specific product where you'd be able to create new plans. You can create different intervals, uh, give them trial days and different pricing. Um, and you can have multiple plans as you saw for that product that I kind of showed you in the previous page. Um, options refers to different um, attributes that you define for this specific product. It can be different sizes, different colors, um, different maybe manufacturers, different brands, anything that you name it. And once you create these different options, Swell would automatically create different variants for your product. So for example, I have selected this size option to automatically create different variants. You could also turn it off. So different options won't create different variants but I have turned it on for the size attribute or option to automatically let me just actually show you so when you're adding an option there is this toggle here first of all you can create the name of your option and select what kind of kind of value you want to put in is it a select is it a kind of boolean toggle uh, short text long text uh, and you can comma separate different values. So for example, if it's a color, I would say blue and then comma separate red, right? That type of stuff. And then you can define different pricing by just clicking on uh, each of these options. You can add different prices and descriptions. So when you're fetching it on your front end, you can see different prices. And here you see this toggle that says automatically generate variants. When this is turned on, when you create a new kind of option with different values, it will create this variance for you. These are the different things that the customer can kind of select. So if you remember from this page, we had two different sizes, standard box and bulk bag with different pricing that we defined kind of in, in the Swell dashboard um, for their prices. The cool thing is that Again, on the same page, you can define related products and related products would be like upsell products or cross sells. So if um, you want them to choose something else, you want to sell them up to a better or an alternative brand or uh, product, you can include other products from your catalog in here as a related product to this. You can also have cross sells 
meaning that, for example, um, you are buying a coffee machine, and as a cross sell, you can also give them filters or the actual coffee itself, uh, and then they would have uh, the option to buy these at a better price. So you can you can add a product. Let's say I want to add a filter when somebody is uh, buying this. Uh, for example, this filter, I can include a discount based on percentage or based on an amount. And once I save this, you'd be able to see this product and it has this discounted uh, value that I just inputted there. You can also have more stuff like regular content and descriptions, tags, um, page title and meta descriptions and a slug for the page that actually renders this specific product on your site. Um, regular stuff you can have over here. Um, categories we already talked about, so let me just uh, exit out of the changes we made. Uh, categories are uh, where you would just want to organize your products. Attributes, we again touched on uh, that you can define for every product or define in a single place over here. Um, and from here you can also have gift cards so you can create gift cards, give them an amount uh, and that they can use at checkout. You could create purchase links uh, where it would just take them to the checkout page without them having to go through your site and selecting a product and then um, actually going to checkout. You can create purchase links and just send those links to people uh, if it is something, uh, let's say, um, that your um, business is selling um, over the phone maybe or um, with a different flow that you might have, you can create purchase links that takes the customer right to the checkout. Now, um, the other stuff that I want to touch on here is customers. So you can create new customers. You can also have the flow in your front end to create new customers. In this video, I'm not going to go over uh, creating new customers from our site, from our front end over here. In a second video, we'll have authentication and uh, this kind of account platform or, or um, kind of section for people to create new accounts and then um, using um, this well front-end API to actually create an account. But you can see you can easily from the dashboard create a new customer and that that's what makes Swell great because it, it's actually like a SaaS platform uh, that a non-technical user can use to do everything that you would do uh, with the API and developers can build. So it's it's a SaaS, but it's also API first. So it exposes all the functionality via the API. So you can use this dashboard to create a new customer, or you can use the API to kind of create that solution, custom solution, any way that you want uh, in your own uh, kind of site. And once you have orders, uh, you would see them in, in here, in different orders, if your orders include subscriptions, you would see your subscriptions. Let's say this is an, a sample order that I had done before and it included the product on subscription and it automatically creates this new subscription over here, uh, what product it is and you know information created on the card and, and who the customer was, so forth and so on. So the dashboard is pretty powerful if you wanna just use it uh, uh, on its own or as a supplement to uh, your site for the admin staff to kind of create products and customers and you know oversee the orders and stuff uh, but you can implement all this functionality on your site as well so on your site you can create an admin dashboard and enable users or your admin staff to work from your site instead of the dashboard because this dashboard is also created with the backend API of Swell which you would have access to so let me just go over that real quick too so in the documentation, you can see there's the backend API, which is actually how they built this um, storefront, dash, uh, this dashboard, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, and then you would have the front end API, which is what we are going to use in this tutorial to kind of interact with the, the Swell API on and um, kind of render different products, create checkouts and you know product pages and category pages. But with the backend API, you're not limited to the Swell dashboard or any functionality in here, just the sky's the limit. You could build any flow that you want for bringing in new customers or new vendors uh, and creating different kind of um, 
pages and sections for your admin and for your customers. So let's go over what we have built over here uh, to quickly show how easy it is to interact with your Swell dashboard. Uh, so let me just go back in here. Uh, for now, the homepage doesn't show anything. The idea would be to show some products over here or some category pages at some point. I'll hopefully finish the product at the homepage. And the products page would be some somewhere that I would show some categories. So these two pages don't have anything specific from Swell. But um, everything is now in this search page where I fetch the products that I have and then show different categories. So let's just start from here. Let's go to our pages, let's go to search, and then um, the index is where I am currently rendering everything. So I'm using get server side props for this page, which renders this page on the server. And the reason why is that I wanna enable the user to sort um, this page based on their um, preference or select different filters. And if you were to render this uh, as a static page, well, there is no way for us to know these filters and the sorting options the user is going to select uh, ahead of time or at build time with the static version. So if you're left with two choices, it's either the get server side props, where it would render this page um, on the server for every request, or you can use the client side rendering where you get the structure of the page as a static page, and then you would fetch the products on client side, and then you would apply the sortings and filters on the client side to just hit your own API endpoint to just um, get categories or get filters or get you know different products. I'm using get server side props, but doesn't really matter. So what we're doing here is that we are getting the query that comes from um, these query parameters that we we can set, let's say with sorting. Uh, we're getting this kind of query parameters and we're passing it to a function called get product. So let's look at this get products. This is where we're talking to the Swell API. So if I go back one level, you can see in the project, I have a lib folder and inside of it, there is a Swell folder. In the Swell for folder, I have this index.js file where I just get this Swell from the Swell.js library. So you need to install this library. This is what enables you to talk to a front end API of your Swell store. Um, you would need to pass in your store ID and your store public key. And this enables you to have a connected client that you can use to interact with the API on the front end. For the back end, you have to install the Swell node, which we're not going to cover in this video, but hopefully in the next, in another video, I'll go over how you would use the backend API. But for now, in here, we have this file that exposes this Swell, which is going to um, help us connect to or interact with the Swell API. For example, in the product, you can see over here, um, I'm getting this Swell client for the get products function that we were calling from inside our get server side props. Um, we're getting the sorts and the filters from the query parameters and passing it to this function. And all we're doing is that we're calling Swell products that list, which gets a list of products based on the sorting and the filters that we're sending. It also comes with pagination, so you can send different pages with different products per page as the limit. And I'm also expanding on uh, different variants. So for each product in this list, I want to have different variants uh, and I want to have the categories that this product belongs to. So that's how the expand works. A lot of fields in Swell, when they come in, it's pretty extensive and you might not need all of those information. So you would expand on what you need and then leave the rest just as an ID, which you could use on the client side to kind of fetch. And as you can see here, I have more functions over here to interact with the Swell front-end API. For example, to get a product by slug or ID, you would call swell.products.get that slug or ID. And again, Swell documentation is, is amazing for the front-end API is what we're concerned now right now. You can see how you can fetch a product, fetch a list of products. You can get products by category. Um, 
you would pass in categories as, as a parameter over here. Um, and something that's uh, really interesting in Swell is um, you can, if, if you see here when I'm fetching different products, these um, kind of filters are dynamic here. So if I go to equipment, you would see a different set of filters that's relevant to these uh, current products. And that's uh, this filters function that you can call on Swell. So um, if you call Swell products filters and pass a list of products, it will give you back a list of relevant filters that you can use. So later on, we're going to see that I fetch products first and then pass that products to this function to list the applicable filters. And then I would show these filters over here to and then uh, list all the categories is how I'm listing all the categories over here um, for my page. So once we got the products and the list of all the categories, once we pass this product to list filters, we get the dynamic filters for whatever it is that um, the user has clicked on. We are passing this to the products results component, um, which holds some state about this different filters or sorting options or the active sort and is ultimately rendering this whole page where it has different categories, uh, where it has different uh, filters, and at the end it has a list of all the products in a product grid like so. So again, I'm using Tailwind CSS for this, um, and it is um, responsive in the sense that if, if I make this a smaller, a lot of these um, disclosure panels or transitions or menu items that you can see here is for that. So if I make this a smaller, um, the filters will be just popping with this a slide over that just reads the same kind of filters and uh, categories. Uh, so those are uh, what you're seeing here is menu items is for this sorting. So you would have this popovers Again, tell them CSS, it's amazing. Uh, and they, they have this component UI library um, as a paid product where you can just have a lot of these components already built and made uh, for React or as an HTML kind of source if you're using um, frameworks like Svelte. But nevertheless, uh, all we're doing here is uh, rendering those categories that we just fetched uh, here, so list of categories, different filters, we're looping through different filters, and we're rendering this list of products. And once we click on one of these guys, uh, we're going to go to a, so if I go down to this product grid, you can see for each one, we are kind of rendering information about the product and it links to the product itself. And if you go to our products page, so, pages, products, category, and the slug. This would be our product page. Again, um, on this page, we are rendering the product information, but more so we're using this use product hook, which is a custom hook. Uh, so if I go back to something that has more options than this, for example, to coffees, and let's say we select this one. So you can see there is, uh, the sizes, so you can select different sizes, you can select different purchasing options, you can select different subscription plans, and to kind of synchronize all of these options that uh, you can select, I've used the use reducer um, in this um, kind of custom hook that I created, to then expose this estate, so um, anywhere that we are rendering a product and we want to interact with these kind of filters, we can easily with the use of this uh, hook. And we have different actions that we can take. As you can see, select a different size, select a different purchase option, a subscription plan. And these actions would perform uh, the state changes necessary based on the information that was also dispatched together with the action and the previous state. With that, we are then rendering details uh, about the product, as you can see. We have the product image. That's a component that just allows you to see different images. We have the product details over here, and then we have this product form, which again, um, 
is kind of rendering these different options that we can select uh, based on uh, different sizes, different attributes, different purchasing options. And, and eventually we would have this uh, kind of add to cart button uh, where it would uh, again call a, a, an API or a function from Swell library to add this product to our cart. So let's quickly review that before going uh, to the cart. So in this library folder that I showed earlier, there is this cart um, group that is our functions to kind of communicate uh, with Swell API for our cart. So we can add items to the cart and all you need to do to add an item to the cart is pass product ID and quantity and options where would be like the purchasing options or um, the product options, so different variants that you can select. And this would just call Swell cart that add item and pass those information. And that would be a cart that's attached to the current session in your Swell dashboard. So if I go back here in the orders, you could see carts and you'd be able to see the current cart that we have. I think it should be this one. Let me see what we have in our cart. Yeah, the two. So um, you can see this, this is the current cart that's already um, in Swell. So it attaches a, a cart object to a current session and it holds a reference to it where you can see there's like different carts in the past that I had if they're converted to a purchase. This is the active one that I'm currently on and there are some carts that were abandoned. You can also create flows to send emails to these abandoned carts. There's, there's a lot of things you can do with Swell, but for now you can see we have a reference to this active cart. Um, and then we have other functions to also work with our cart. We can remove items from it. We can update the quantity. We can empty the cart. Or if we need, we can just get the whole cart, for example, I'm getting the card to just show the number of items in my header over here and then share it via a kind of context provider uh, in my app that we're going to see in a second. So that's how we would work with the cart object uh, from the Swell API. And now let's see what this cart is actually doing. So I'm using context um, in React uh, to kind of share the state of our cart throughout my app. So I have this cart provider uh, where upon initializing this component, I am calling this get cart to kind of get the cart, the current cart that's attached to the session and then uh, share it as a value uh, throughout my application. So one of the values that we're sharing is cart. If there's any error or loading, when we're loading the, the cart or when we're updating the cart, adding an item and removing an item. So you can you can have different functionality that you want to expose to your application uh, via a context provider. And this is how I wrapped my whole application with a card provider. So this functionality, the card object and uh, adding and removing items from the card is shared um, throughout my application. And I have a layout which just renders that foot header and the footer. Quickly, if I show you my layout over here, so components, layout, you could see um, in the index, I am um, using this header and footer component. I have the main to render anything that we pass to it. And I have this card slider, again, uh, which uh, I designed with use of Tailwind CSS um, and a state to say if it is open or closed. Um, and for the header, just to quickly see a use of what we're sharing. You can see I'm using this use cart hook from our context provider to get the cart object and show that number as the item quantity if there's anything in the cart right beside this shopping cart icon. So once you have something in your cart and you're done, uh, you hit the checkout, which redirects the user to a page that's hosted by Swell. So continue and continue to payment. I'm going to use a sample credit card number that just works with any expiry date. And once I hit complete order, it is going to complete that cart or convert that cart to uh, an order. Um, I hit continue shopping. It will redirect me back to my app 
And if we go back to the Swell dashboard now and refresh this page, we should be able to see our carts converted. So that cart that was active, it's now converted. And in my orders, I now have this new order that was just uh, submitted from that coffee uh, with the shipping address that I put, the customer information, the credit card that I uh, used um, for, and if it was paid or not. And as you can see here, this was a subscription product, so that was in my cart. So it says that the fulfillment is subscription. It's a weekly subscription. And if I go to my subscriptions now, I should be able to see that new subscription created automatically for me in my dashboard. But if you click on it, it tells you what order it's coming from uh, and what the details of the product is there, who the customer is. Um, and then you can add notes and uh, kind of edit shipping if it is a physical product that you're sending on a subscription and you would want to add like a, a, a shipping tracking id you can if you wanted to send an invoice to the customer you can um, uh, from the dashboard itself that's it for this video folks uh, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below i'm going to cover um, authentication in the next video kind of completing what we covered today um, whereby users can create accounts from our site uh, and we're uh, going to create a user dashboard for them to see their previous orders maybe to track the shipment of their orders um, also would enable them to add payment methods so that they can use for their future purchases i would also like to show you the marketplace feature from swell uh, and how you can extend the data models in swell add fields and uh, kind of relationships necessary for a marketplace whereby you can invite third-party vendors to also come on the platform create an account add products and sell those products through your platform and for payments we'll be using stripe connect platform uh, where you can invite vendors to create a connect account on your stripe connect kind of platform and they would uh, just get paid out um, once a product is sold on your platform and you would charge them a platform fee so it's pretty extensible what you can do with Swell. and if that interests you stay tuned for that video on the channel to come up and i hope to see you uh, in the next one bye bye